Today we're going to be discussing case failures, some different types of case failures, things to look out for, the causes of these, and what you can do to avoid them. My name is Pete, and welcome to the workshop. Now, taking care of your cases is very much like treating your significant other. If you look after it, chances are it's going to stick around for a longer time. Now, if you neglect it, they're going to fail on you, okay, and it's going to be very expensive. So, hence the comparison. So, first things first, during your reloading process, the more particular you are with setting up your reloading dies and things like that, and the steps you take during that process is going to lead to better brass life. Now, in this sport of ours, and let's be honest, in the year 2023, it has gotten ridiculously expensive. So the last thing you want to be doing is setting your dies up as per the instruction manual that comes with the die. You know, that turn it until it hits the shell plate and then give it like another three quarters of a turn. That's not the way to do it. I have actually got a video on my channel of how to perfectly set up your reloading dies so that you're only bumping your shoulders back the minimum amount so that you can avoid things like this. And I'm gonna link that video up here for you guys and at the end. Now, first thing we're gonna look at here is case head separation. Now, this is typically a scenario where, you know, if I take this thing here and I can point this out to you guys, you'll see that this case is starting to break. You can actually hear that over there. What happens here is if you do not spot this and you're doing a lot of bulk reloading, that's why it's so important to visually inspect every single case that you are working with when you're making ammunition. Because at the end of the day, we're making effectively a controlled explosion and putting our face next to it. So you want to make sure that these are in sound, proper condition. Now, if you do not set up your reloading dies correctly, the case has to move so much because you've effectively pushed the shoulder so far back that when that explosion occurs, as it slams into the chamber, it's actually stretching the bottom of your case over here and then you start getting this case head separation. Now, a couple of things can happen here. If you, fight, if you were to reload this case, okay, this is quite an extreme example where you can see it already cracking. Now, this is as a result, and most of these cases you might be asking, by the way, why is this guy telling us about reloading mistakes and how your brass fails, but you should also set up your stuff correctly, but in front of him there's five cases that are absolutely trashed. There's a reason for that. A lot of these examples here are amplified during what we call the fire forming process, and I've got an example here which we'll circle back to just now. Now these cases have been subject to forces beyond sort of normal use due to the fire forming process that I've had to go through to get them from one case to a different case, which is six dash in this case. Now, here, if I was to shoot this case again, chances are some of the gases during the combustion process can actually leak out of this crack over here and actually permanently damage my chamber and the inside of my chamber, almost, if you will, welding the inside of the chamber, okay, like a um, sort of a gas burner. So that's something to look out for here. This can also be a match or a hunt ender for you. If you're getting case head separation like this, Chances are the front section of your case can remain in your chamber and as you extract that bolt and I've seen this happen a few times at matches as you extract that bolt it actually completes this tear that that we have over here and it only extracts the rearward portion and the remainder of the case is actually sitting in your chamber that's game over if you don't have a specialized tool to try and get that out because even with the cleaning rod it can be exceptionally difficult to get this sucker out if it's broken off there. I actually had this when I just got into shooting. I was shooting some factory ammunition that I reloaded a few times with poor quality brass that I was using and as I racked my round and I went to pick up my case I picked up two different sections of my case and that happened in a match so I was extremely lucky that it actually pulled out both sections and it kind of broke as it came out the ejection port. So that one I was super lucky on. Now to talk to you guys about the fire forming process, if we have a look at these two guys here, you'll see that both of these shoulders are still round like that. Now what happens is straight six BR, I have to fire form up to get to a sharp shoulder like we have there. Now during this process, okay, the brass is working extremely hard, harder than it would normally do. In other words, the brass is moving much more than in sort of a conventional case, especially if you've set up your reloading die correctly. Now I'm gonna pop that guy back over here. Now in this case, we see a different type of case failure. Now this neck has actually started 
but you tear here on the shoulder region. Now sometimes you will also see the necks breaking over here at the top. Something very important we have to keep in mind is every time we're seating a bullet, okay, so friction fit, pushing a bullet back into the neck over here, shooting that case, okay, the explosion and the growth of the brass and the slamming into our chamber, I'm exaggerating that, but trust me, at you know, 35,000 PSI, things are happening in there. And also resizing that case back down so you can reload it again. We are work hardening the brass. So this section of the brass over here, the part that's moving the most, is actually changing on a molecular level. That's why you'll see a lot of the good shooting guys and a lot of the guys that shoot a lot, we use a process called annealing where we actually superheat this brass to a very specific temperature. Now myself, I use an annealing made perfect machine. It is the industry standard for when it comes to annealing. And it's the same every single time. I used to do it with gas. That's a whole nother video, gas versus induction annealing. Let me know if you guys want me to do a video on that. We can potentially even run some tests. But essentially you wanna be doing the same thing every time, hence I do the annealing made perfect. Now, if you do not do that, as these necks get harder and harder and harder, eventually they'll start to crack like this. And then again, we'll have the same thing as with this one. As this explosion occurs, the bullet starts moving down the barrel over here and gas is gonna leak out there and potentially harm your chamber permanently. So that is something we wanna look out for. So this one is gonna go straight to the bin actually. All of these have been saved from the bin for the purpose of making this video. The other thing that can severely damage your brass is excessive pressure. Now these two cases, visually, everything looks hunky-dory. But let me demonstrate for you guys. I've got a primer over here, okay? Actually, on one of these cases, we can see some extraction marks. So I'll try and get us a close-up of that. And on this section over here, we can actually see where there was so much pressure that we've got a little bit of an extraction mark over there. Now the pressure was so excessive on these due to a carbon ring, which is a phenomenon that can occur in your chamber. I've got a video on that and a video on how to diagnose and remove those. There is serious pain in the ass and they can be very, very dangerous if you have one. So make sure you check out that video at the end. Now these cases were subject to so much pressure that if I take this primer, I can actually insert this primer with my hand, okay, like that, and there we go. Now this seems fine. Oh wait, hang on, I can't blow that out. Let's do this. Now today's video is brought to us by MDT Sporting Goods. This rifle is actually featured in one or two of our other workshop videos. It's my 30 Sherman mag. In fact, I've got a loaded round over here. And guys, just like anything else in your process, Buying the right things the first time is so vital for long-term success and I've been trusting MDT Sporting Goods with my precision rifles ever since I got into this game. It was the very first chassis system I ever bought. Their website is mdttech.com. You can shop a wide variety of chassis systems, whether it is something like this gorgeous ACC you see in front of me here. I've chosen this one specifically because it has that CIP length magwell so I can run these super long rounds in there and feed them from my magazine which is a huge benefit in these long range competitions or whether you're looking for like a hunting setup. Also if you're based in South Africa I've got a store impactproshop.net where we sell MDT stuff, we've got Vortex stuff, we've got so much super cool precision rifle gear so make sure you swing by there if you're looking for MDT stuff. Also I've got some links in the bio if you want to shop Brownells, Amazon, all of those kind of lovely places and we get a small affiliate commission on that, which goes a long way to helping run this channel. Anyway, back to the video. On this other case, we should be able to blow that out. Either way, you should not be able to seat a primer using your finger. Yeah, there we go. So these primer pockets have stretched to such a point where the primer is no longer being securely held okay, by that friction fit. Now this is obviously gonna cause major ignition inconsistencies. And one thing that actually helps me see that is when I'm seating my primers or putting the primers in, I use that Primal Rights competition priming tool and you've got so much feel on the amount of force needed that you can actually start separating cases where you feel the primers are going in with less force needed on some of the others. So guys, these are some of the things to look out for when you're reloading. Always visually inspect your cases. Take care to set up your equipment correctly because that is gonna be the number one thing to get the most life out of your cases. Do you need a kneeling machine? It depends how much you're shooting. If you're a competition shooter, probably yes. 
If you're hunting once or twice a year, you probably know. Um, but the most important thing is if you're relearning correctly to set up your full sizing die correctly where you're not overworking your brass, then stay on top of your cleaning regimen, avoid carbon rings and things to that effect and you should be off to the races. Guys, I've linked the other two videos I've referenced earlier in the video over here. There is a playlist called The Workshop on my channel with many other videos like this. As always, leave me a comment on videos that you would like to see me do that we can add to this library of knowledge to help you guys make less mistakes and learn from others' mistakes. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.